Well, today you should definitely stay to the very end because I'm going to be adding LED lights to illuminate my painting from behind. This is just experimental, but it's something I'm very excited to try. A good friend of mine sent me this picture here. This is a painting that she did and put against a window and just by accident discovered light shining through it. And that's the inspiration for adding the lights behind. So we'll see what kind of effect we get. All right, let's get started. Let's start out today with a little bit of blue. Of course, this is, well, not of course, this doesn't have to be nighttime. Could just be stormy, but I think we're gonna go ahead and make it evening. Now, if you do black and blue together, you must add red. Must add red, no choice. <laughs> At least when you're talking to sky, because black and blue will give you the tiniest little bit of a green cast. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. Okay, now I've already put a little clear gel and white on the top of this canvas, so we are ready to go. Now I've already experimented a little bit and I know for a fact that the thin areas, the areas where you don't apply much paint, they do a real good job of glowing when we apply the lighting. But the areas that are thick with mainly with black there, they they really block the light out. Well, as you I mean, this, this is nothing, nothing groundbreaking or anything like that. But you know, it's just worth noting. Uh, yes, the most official, complicated explanation for the silliest, basic, most basic little thing. But hey, that's all right. Now, as far as the whole lighting thing, like I said, it's just experimental, and I'm just doing it for fun. I've seen. I have seen prints, like reproduction prints of paintings with um, little, uh, what, oh, come on, what are those, like fishing line, what's it, what's it called, you know what I mean, would be a oh, fiber optic style, you know, like stars or whatever, but this is completely different because we're not poking through the canvas, so it would be very cool, I think, it would be very cool. Hey, real quick, let me show you the paintings that you guys did at the the one I did last week. I really enjoy seeing those. You guys did a great job. And don't forget to use the hashtag on the screen to share your versions. And I will do my best to get them in the next video. Now I've got a shop towel. I'm gonna shape my sky using this. This will help remove paint, and make it to where we won't cause the, you know, the painting to get muddy. And also this is physically removing the, the barrier so the light can shine through. This is very, very transparent. The light will have no trouble getting through that as my lightning bolt's gonna come right through there. And I may want to have kind of another one spilling through the sky over in this direction, maybe from the same kind of cloudy area. I don't know, could be pretty. Maybe just kind of across, oh, that's good. You can just hear the lightning. Oh, you can hear the thunder. You <laughs> can't hear the lightning. I know how it goes. Uh, hey, am I the only one that always says that wrong? Even though they they know, you know, I I know which is which, but I always say it wrong, and that's okay. <laughs> we don't get extra points for saying the right thing around here anyways. There. So you see, I'm already basically planning out my, my lightning path there. I think it's really important that we do that today, especially not having really anything to do with the art but just my silly little <laughs> experiment. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna fill this in a little thicker where I don't want that lightning to shine as much. It's also just a wee bit too gray for my taste. I'm gonna see if I can't get just a little more blue just for the sake of picking the color. You could probably do, you know, red or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter, but I want that kind of cold feeling because I've I've got these more warm lights. So we're gonna leave that sky alone for now, just for a bit. I'm going to go ahead and work on what little like land objects we have. Not, not a whole lot obviously today, but just a few. <laughs> and yes, it is obviously because you've already seen the thumbnail. You have a better idea than I do, actually. It's funny, each painting, you guys have a better idea. You know exactly what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. That's kind of interesting. Kind of fun to think about, I guess. Kind of pointless to think about, I don't know. There. Pretty cool. 
So as you can see, I'm trying to go with something subtle. I think subtle works. Yeah, there we go. Got a glare on that side, but that's okay. <laughs> Seeing what you're doing is overrated anyways. Who cares? <laughs> I Half the time I say, close your eyes and throw it in. I'm taking my own advice. Let's see about maybe getting us something right here. Just kind of a mountain cliff thing. This is maybe um, maybe not necessarily tropical. I don't know if it's tropical or not. I don't really care. I'm mostly going for a fairly generic um, seascape that you know, that could be kind of anything. Because what I'm really interested in is seeing what kind of beautiful light we can have bouncing off these objects, bouncing off the the waves. It's gonna be so pretty. The lighting from coming from the lightning and the moon, wherever that is. Mostly from the lightning kind of cracking that. Oh, it's going to be nice. Ooh. All right. Now, as far as the actual seascape portion of this, I didn't really, didn't really plan it out as far as the, as far as the little water line goes. So let's see about recovering some of that. Uh, yes. Kind of a, oh, I don't even know, kind of a similar color, kind of a similar blue gray to the rest of this. Do we? Do we need it perfect? Absolutely not. Perfection gets us no bonus points around here. There. Very misty, and I think that works. I really do. I don't think we want it a whole lot more than that. It's kind of pretty. Kind of pretty. We'll stop right here, though, because I need to sketch out where my, where my wave is going to go. While we're playing around with the misty colors, though, let me real quick just get in. Uh, some mist right along that mountain range. So now I've got a basic kind of rough wave sketched out here. And yeah, that's good because you need to know where you're going to put your colors, you know. That is the most important thing. You can't, uh, you can't be just going in here. Well, you can <laughs> if you want to. But it, I, ah, I got to tell you what I was going to say. <laughs> you can't be getting in here and just throwing color in at random because if you do that and you try to go back and highlight the wave then you'll be fighting that dark paint just like in a landscape you don't put you don't put dark where you want light areas to be if you can help it you can try it but it just doesn't work as good i've tried it so my point in all of that there is a point i'll find it eventually <laughs> is pre-plan your wave because it makes it easier that's my point there i knew we'd get there one day that looks really decent. I do need to wipe out the eye of the wave there. It's a little bright. This painting, how or not a little bright, but a little thick. This painting isn't super bright. Like the wave isn't super bright. And I like that. I think it just is nice. Yeah, it definitely needs a little, little shop towel action, but that's fine. A little bit there, a little bit here. That's just pretty. That's all it takes, really. A little more. See, I'm just being kind of sparing with my colors, a little more blue, perhaps. Just throw a little of that back here. And then less and less and less as you go back. In fact, I've, I've got the filbert brush, of course, here, but I may grab, let's do that. Let's grab a little, little three quarter flat brush, which really is probably your best choice for a seascape like this. Do you see the difference? It just layers paint differently. It layers paint more smoothly because it's smooth chiseled snappy brush you know that works all right that makes that makes that area look a little better we'll just take a little maybe a little more blue kind of have a bunch of these blue colors so almost just select whichever one you want laying out here on the palette next i'm going to work here on the foam of the wave which is kind of this pretty purple color although looking at that purple on the canvas it's not as nice as i was hoping to me it's too red so i'm going to change it there, see the difference? Listen, if you're not happy when you put it on the canvas, just change it. Just takes a minute. It's well worth it. Well worth it. You might as well be happy with your paintings. There. Yeah, a lot of the time stuff like this is just easy to change, you know? A color here or a shadow there, whatever it takes. Just adjust it till you're pleased. There. Or at least until you've made an improvement. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you know you make an adjustment and it makes an improvement, then great. You know, be excited. It doesn't have to be perfect. Be excited anyways. 
<laughs> painting, life is more fun. It's not just painting. Life is more fun if you get excited about stuff. And that is your inspirational moment for today. There. Yeah, just a little of that kind of soft purple is a good. Oh, I did wipe the eye of the wave out just a minute ago. But that's only one, one step in a chain of many steps because we've got to add some more highlight, do some more blending, a whole bunch of stuff. Hmm. I think we can work with this though. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. Just going to play around here. Not doing anything too crazy, but I tell you what, we'll very soon get in here and do some highlights. Hey, real quick want to create kind of just some rippled water effects right here. Fairly light. This is going to be, there we go. This is going to be the stuff that's splashing up against the beach. Maybe a big rock in the middle or, or just off to the side. And then just a little, watch this, just a little, but not much. Splashy bit. <laughs> yes, splashy bit right up here. And then it can transition back again to some more rocks. What do you think? Cool? I think, I think it'll be all right. We'll see. Next, we're going to go ahead and paint in the sand area. Pretty much the last one. No, not pretty much. It is definitely, <laughs> oh boy. it is definitely the last part of the canvas that needs to be filled in. Then we're ready to get on to details, which will be fun. I'm not going to go too crazy, but we will concentrate a nice amount of light and detail here in the middle. I think it'll look good that way. I've got a little umber. I've got a little bit of our yellow ochre. That works. Kind of don't want to go too crazy with those colors, but a little is nice. A little is definitely nice. It's not like we have a complete lacking of color. You know, there's the turquoise there. There's a little purple in there. I don't want to just have black and white or just black and white and blue. This is really, it's nice to have some amount of warm colors, even though it's a nighttime and a stormy scene. And maybe in real life, it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be with these warm colors, but that does not in any way mean that we shouldn't have warm colors. We definitely should. Just makes the painting nicer. There. So anyway, you kind of get the idea here. Nothing too crazy. Would love to, love to add in here, this rock. Yep, that works. Helps to, to, to keep your eye in this area, really make it work. There. And then again, like I said, over here, I think we already had that planned out. Good, just a quick, quick block in. And I'm going to sprinkle on just a little bit of color here to this, to this splashy area. You, you know, you can kind of go as little or as much as you want. This is not a very bright painting, but we still want to have some amount of contrast here in this wave. That works. Just kind of blend it right down. Maybe a little less down here. Maybe it's kind of hidden because of the, you know, the actual rolling part of the wave. That works. And then maybe right here, just to break it up, have a little splash that comes up. You don't have to, it's kind of optional, but I like it. There, <laughs> I like that, that we can work with that. We can definitely work with that. As we go off to the left, I think I'm just gonna soften it out. Maybe to where you don't hardly see you know, that transition line. I think that works. Oh yeah, just, just almost tapping it, <laughs> kind of creating those details maybe where they don't even exist. That's good. And maybe softening it right here as well. Definitely a little softer right there. It's definitely easy to overdo, but at the same time, if you skip this step altogether, it just kind of looks flat and uninteresting. You gotta have, you gotta have a little, a little softness. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in kind of some of these brighter areas. Just the detail brush. That's about all about all that's required. <laughs> that works. It looks good. Now don't do too much to where it gets too busy, but enough that it does look interesting. Nice. 
See that just squiggles. <laughs> it's amazing the amount of just squiggly lines. And if you put them, if you put enough of them together, they actually start to look like something, which is really cool, considering <laughs> it's just a bunch of lines. There, we think we can work with that. See that just bumpy and wiggly, and it kind of looks like a storm. But this is all dependent on having not too much paint here in the background, just enough to get this to, to blend. Any more than is necessary will cause problems. So wipe that canvas off. And I'm gonna quickly indicate just some little evergreens up here. They're nothing more than a stroke or two. You don't really don't need to go overboard with them. Honestly, it's probably enough. I don't even know if you need to highlight them or not. Maybe just put a touch highlight. You know, usually when, here, watch this. Usually when I don't know if I want to highlight something, I go ahead and do it because people will tell you that you forgot or something like that if you don't. But if you just put a very, very slight highlight on them, then it makes it look like you, you know, purposely did it. So there you go. That's my, that's my thought. Obviously that's not true each and every time, but I think it is true a lot of the time. Just a quick highlight is better than none. Now we're gonna do one of my favorite techniques when it comes to painting seascapes, which is just flicking a little bit of foam here in the wave. This is actually also one of my favorite techniques for roads. I think it does a really good job in sand in the on the beach. Super fun. Yeah, it, look at the detail that it adds so quick. And yes, it's okay to get completely excited and carried away. <laughs> have fun. Got to have fun. I like to just keep a little eraser standing by to get rid of anything that happens to splatter kind of in the dark areas or somewhere where you don't want it to be. But I, to me, it just makes the biggest difference. The biggest difference. Especially right up in here, maybe. Good. Now we need to get in here with the liner brush and create some better details, but this is this is certainly a, goes a long way to creating these detailed areas. While I'm at it, here, let me just splash some of this here in the sand. That's good. Wow, look at the contrast. Nice. Oh yeah, so good. So let's just thin down a little bit with some oil, just like you would with the liner brush. So actually, when we go to do the liner brush, we'll be ready to go. Here's just a slightly brighter white. Just a hit here and there, not too much. Ooh. It's about to drip down, but anyway, you get the idea. Now I've got the liner brush and a little bit of blue and white thinned down. It needs to be a little thinner than that, but <laughs> too much thinner and it's gonna go right onto my foot. So we don't want that. Let's go ahead and just add in a few of the final details. Kind of just stuff that we need to get done. I like to save it for the end, you don't have to. You could certainly do this, you know, before you splatter, or you can do it whatever order you want. Because at this point, we're kind of starting to thin the paints down kind of a bit, quite a bit, really. So you're not going to be going over this much. Anyway, that's important to keep in mind. And the last thing you want to do is create mud. A little brighter white, though. Sometimes it's not necessary to go too bright when you use the liner brush because it comes off without mixing much. So, you, you know, you tend, it tends to look brighter than you would expect. And the same is true, actually more true when it comes to painting limbs on a tree, stuff like that. They'll look darker than you, than you think they will. And then it kind of throws everything off. So pay attention to that. They're just creating a little crisp detail. Like that, I think that works, not too much, but it gives it kind of a, just a reason to be illuminated there, you know? Bringing that light through the middle. Reason for a little extra detail, because the light's hitting. Hope that makes sense, it probably doesn't, but boy, it sounded good before I said it. <laughs> ah, yes, we're almost done, and that's okay. Just a faint, faint, detail here in the background. I'll smooth those out with blender brush. Good. Actually you kind of smooth some of these out. You just touch them once and they completely vanish, don't they? Just a little 
whoosh of highlight here and there. Mm. You can just go crazy when you paint seascapes. So it is important to kind of keep an eye on things. Don't let them get too carried away. Now, as you can see, I got out a little more color specifically for this step. Maybe just a touch of yellow ochre, not much, mostly just the red and the white. We're going to be doing, that's honestly too much color. I want more white in it. There we go. <laughs> got my one square inch of palette here to work with. But that is okay. It's enough. We're going to be painting in our lightning here. All right, <laughs> ready for this. We're going to give it a good try. That's about all I can say. We're going to try. It's going to come down. I have painted lightning once before. Just once. Actually, hey, let me stop right there and stand back because I've already predetermined it. If I can speak, say I'm getting to where I'm almost done here. Predetermined where that lightning was going to be. So I need to, you know, follow it. And, you know, you can make it touch down strike. I think I might just leave it kind of to fade away. I think it's a better look. Not too much, but just enough here. Yeah, that's actually very lightning looking. Not unlike a tree branch, really. I think that works. Should we do one more? That one kind of just crackling across the sky. I can hear this one. Oh, it's good stuff. This one's a little more subtle. That's why it's quite a bit darker. Quick update, I just decided to, you know, to just touch like this right along the edge of that lightning bolt. You can see I kind of mushed it away somewhat. Because we didn't have much paint in the background, I think it worked. If you had a lot of paint, I bet you that would go muddy, just a thought. But now I'm gonna go back and just repair where I messed it up. But the idea there is it kind of makes it glow, but either way, I think you probably end up doing it twice. Even if you painted the glow in first, pretty much almost painting lightning twice. So might as well just go ahead and put it in with a liner brush because the paint is fairly thin there. And that way that thin paint should just mix right over that blue as long as you just touch it one time. Well, here it is, our finished painting with the LEDs turned on from behind. You can see they're flashing like lightning and it kind of gives it a really interesting effect. Now, I'm no expert in LEDs, I'm just experimenting here, but I found I could use a music controller. Unfortunately, that means you need to have your phone playing thunder sounds in order to get the lightning effect, but it works pretty well. These little controllers are cheap, though, and I already had two break on me, so maybe there's something better. Otherwise, all I have is just a regular LED light strip. Well, well, hopefully you enjoyed seeing this. It's just experimental, just me kind of having fun. Nothing really too serious, but it is interesting, kind of fun to see. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.